got him until the bottom of the hour, unless the bell rings. Uh, there's a vote at 1230 Eastern. We've got Ron Paul uh, for the next 20 minutes. I want to first play a clip for the congressman uh, of the Herman von Rompuy, the head of the EU, saying that the carbon tax and this treaty will be the birth of world governance. And then I want to play Al Gore saying the same thing and get the congressman's take out of the gates on that subject. Here is the new head of the EU. Nine is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. Okay. And he goes on for many minutes after that. Here's Al Gore saying that environmentalism is the key to global governance. Here is Al Gore, vice, former Vice President Al Gore. But it is the awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global okay. agreements. Congressman, for 30 years you've warned of global government reading their own documents. I have the Danish text leaked of the treaty calling for global governance, a global authority over all air travel over the oceans, 2% tax, flat tax on all GDPs paid to the IMF and World Bank, uh, effectively abolishing the UN's power. The UN is freaking out. Private, corporate, global governance. Congressman, uh, there's no longer any denial about this, is there? No way, and uh, in a way it may serve to our benefit because... The people are going to wake up just as our federal government fails. You know, we hear more about nullification and secession, and I figure that when the federal government fails or the money fails, there's going to be a lot of independence declared. So even though they're bold and they're making these plans, uh, they're not going to be effective, and it may serve our purpose in waking, waking up the people. But they, they've been pushing this for a good many years. But, you know, 20 years ago, approximately, when, you know, the Soviet system collapsed, they quit using the word socialism. But they shifted over toward this environmental uh, effort, claiming that they could get government control through through this. And they have done a, a ma amazing job in infiltrating our public school system and indoctrinating our young kids and young kids going home and talking and yelling at their parents and for environmental things and pollution and all this. So so they have invaded us, but uh, hopefully we, we can survive and be motivated enough to counteract these uh, these efforts and, and uh, you know, make it clear that world government is to no one's benefit except the, those who get to govern the others. I've interviewed literally hundreds of reporters that have been at these different globalist summits, including five or six the last few days at Copenhagen, and they say that there's a sense of desperation and panic uh, by the big banks predominantly that are funding this uh, this this private corporate global government. Uh, sir, do you agree with me or perhaps you can elaborate on the fact that now that they've been revealed because we did our job in the face of r ridicule and exposed their global government plan, that now because they've been exposed, they're coming out in the open and being more bold and honest about it. I mean, what's your take on why they're so bold? Well, I think that could be it. They have to be uh, more aggressive. But in many in, in many ways, though, people are backing off from this because there, you know, some major candidates that have been, uh, uh, you know, support, supporters of uh, trade cap and trade, and have taken their names off the bill. So they're starting to understand this. Same way with. Uh, you know, audit the Fed thing. You know, just look how the establishment come down hard and Bernanke hiring lobbyists and him writing editorials. Uh, it hasn't seemed to help their side. They're still on the defensive. But we are in a struggle. There is no doubt, and they are going to get tougher. And right now, too many of them have too much power in different governments. And if they take this next step that they can exert power with a world government and a world military uh, which is partially here already, then, then we're in, in very big trouble. But I, I tend to want to be more optimistic, thinking that the people will wake up and we have the tools still of the radio. Hopefully that'll last, and still we have the Internet. Hopefully that'll last, but, but they're capable of closing us down. So uh, this is, it is vital that we wake up as many people as possible as quickly as possible.
Congressman, uh, you brought up the fact that uh, the Senate is now saying they're probably not going to ratify the treaty, even if Obama signs it. That may be a red herring to make us stand down, but then it, it looks like it may be real because, as you know, Obama two days ago was in the Associated Press headline, Obama threatens command and control and tells Congress, uh, the, the real boss in our uh, system of government, the uh, three three pillars of government, legislative, executive, judicial, saying, I don't care if you don't pass this. The EPA is going to implement this by executive fiat. Yeah, and that goes to show what they can do, you know, on the system that we've allowed to be created. You know, the executive branch has tremendous powers, and the courts won't help us. They write regulations. They have the force of law. And it reminds me of that statement, uh, stroke of the pen, uh, law of the land, kind of cool. And that's how p powerful presidents are. They write executive orders. They write uh, signing statements, and they do what they want. And uh, this is why the movement uh, is is getting very, very disgusted and saying, you know, they keep talking about nullification and secession, and, uh, and that growth is going to continue. Congressman, is it not... An impeachable offense to have the White House telling Congress, if you don't ratify a treaty, handing our control over to the IMF and World Bank now in the treaty for all of these unlimited taxes. They say they have the power to just raise any taxes they want, selectively enforce regulations to the benefit of that inner coterie uh, of uh, global robber barons. I mean, is this not an impeachable offense if Obama attempts to supersede the will of the Congress? Well, it, it certainly deserves a lot of attention. I don't know whether it's going to be put in that category. It's not going to happen because they've been doing it for so long. It, it means that, uh, you know, everybody in the Congress is guilty. You know, everybody in the executive branch is guilty, and just about everybody in this judicial system is guilty. So so that's not going to happen, and uh, I, I, I guess to many of us it is a high crime, uh, and it should be looked at. But that's that's not going to happen. That's not... I mean, we have to just change the understanding by more and more people on what we have to uh, replace what we have right now. With well, how do we block it then? How do we block a president acting as a dictator under Presidential Decision Directive 51 and others saying, I'll do whatever I want. I'll hand America over to the United Nations and IMF and World Bank. Well, if they get to that point where, you know, it's, it's literally so, uh, right now they would argue the case against that, but... Uh, you know, I think that subtly we're we're moving in that direction, uh, but but this would all stop if 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 we had the right numbers, uh, this Congress would be eliminated and we'd have different people here and they would be passing legislation and then if the public was uh, you know on our side, then the president couldn't do it just because of public pressure. The president isn't going to uh, march next weekend and take your gun. He might like to and he might be moving in that direction, but he's not going to do it. There's a limit. Public opinion is not going to let that happen. Uh, so public opinion is what really, really counts and puts up the resistance, uh, you know, to what they're doing. And we're moving in that direction, and, and it's much better. But uh, it, it won't be a technical matter of uh, of throwing the president out for for this. They're, they're just not uh, – the mentality here in Washington isn't, isn't even considering anything like that. The American people have to change the nature of Congress before anything else will happen.